The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is a remarkable and breathtaking experience that builds upon one of the best games ever made. You are our final hope. With a deeper story and a more fully formed world, Tears of the Kingdom addresses some of the criticisms of Breath of the Wild while showcasing even more of this fantastic and unique version of Hyrule. As someone who played through Breath of the Wild twice, Tears of the Kingdom doesn't feel terribly different on its surface. The game engine, the controls, and the UI remain almost completely unchanged, including some of the more frustrating and time-consuming systems like the weapon degradation and cooking to replenish health. However, crafting has been expanded somewhat thanks to the addition of the Fuse ability. Players can take the oftentimes basic sticks, staffs, and swords wielded by enemies and upgrade them using monster parts or even fruit and vegetables, providing a kind of weapon scaling that wasn't present in the original game. The Fuse ability really shines when players find unexpected combinations of weapon and object, Equipping a spring box to a shield transformed it into a devastating counter to rushing foes, while equipping a mushroom to a large stick turned it into a springy bat that sent numerous enemies flying over cliffs and ledges. The other new mechanics in the game are the Ascend, Recall, and Ultra Hand abilities. Now, both Ascend and Recall are mostly situational abilities that offer new ways to solve puzzles and traverse through the world. Ultra Hand is much more versatile, allowing players to toss crates and boards or build a variety of structures and vehicles that can be powered by Zonai tools like wheels, fans, and engines. These Zonai tools expend a certain type of stamina that can be upgraded over time, and it allows players to quickly move across the terrain or even soar in the sky to explore this new Hyrule even more. While the vehicles are fine in situational uses, I honestly felt that they ran counter to my need to explore every nook and cranny in the game. I'm sure that once I play this this game for a few hundred hours, I'll be much more apt to build a car to speed across Hyrule Field since I simply just don't need to explore every open place over and over and over again. The most impressive part of Tears of the Kingdom is how much Hyrule has grown over the last six years. In addition to the Sky Islands, which everyone saw in the various previews and trailers, Tears of the Kingdom also adds dozens of caves and wells along an entirely new subterranean world that's basically a second map. Even Hyrule itself has been drastically changed by the upheaval, changing so much of the world that it sometimes feels like a totally different place than the first game. Landmarks from Breath of the Wild have been marred by gloom or ruins falling from the skies, which encourages players to return to their beloved haunts to see exactly what has changed. There's also a lot more variety in the monsters that now threaten Link, providing new challenges and making the world seem a lot more flavorful after a player has explored the map for the first time. Even some of the returning bosses have a new twist to them. There are new varieties of Talus, of Hinnix, and Lynels, all of which have n even more ways to kill players than before. Perhaps most importantly, the game has proper dungeons now, with unique themes and bosses that can really provide a Zelda flavor missing from Breath of the Wild. Now, in terms of the story, the core theme has also drastically changed from Breath of the Wild. There was a deliberate emptiness to Hyrule in Breath of the Wild. A sense of isolation that came from exploring a gorgeous but ruined world. In Tears of the Kingdom, that isolation has been replaced by a Hyrule that's in recovery, where the characters of the first game not only remember Link, but they are encouraged and inspired by Link's actions and Zelda's leadership during the period between games. Tears of the Kingdom reminds players that Link has friends, and that his quest to save Hyrule a second time is not a solitary task. We also see a lot more impact to Link's actions as he completes the dozens of storylines found in the game. Population centers grow as Hyrule becomes a bit more safer, and the completion of some storylines allow others to progress. Watching the world of Hyrule progress as Link makes his way through the game is another way that Tears of the Kingdom feels a little bit more structured than Breath of the Wild without sacrificing all that open world exploration that its predecessor was known for. Now my biggest criticism of Tears of the Kingdom is that the sheer number of choices can be paralyzing at times, and it often encourages you to find the same solutions over and over again. While you can fuse almost anything to a weapon, it's oftentimes easier just to pick the same old monster part or the same elemental fruit instead of really getting innovative. And while the addition of recipes are appreciated, it still takes way too much time to properly stockpile food in the game before making a significant trek into a dangerous terrain. But Frankly, these are relatively minor complaints and are piddly in comparison to the sheer amount of things to do and places to explore in the game. 
The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is a worthy successor to Breath of the Wild, and is really a Game of the Year contender. It builds upon the previous game without feeling derivative or cash grabby, and it provides a distinct experience that improves on almost every aspect of Breath of the Wild. Tears of the Kingdom provides plenty of room to innovate and improvise, while keeping the same spirit of exploration and wonder present in the first game. Our rating is a 5 out of 5.